When I first saw him with the kids, I, that just instantly made me cry because I just thought, this is what it's all about. Everyone around here that, was, that has been involved in this, that has made this happen on this day, I couldn't be more grateful. Still have a long road, still recovering. I just appreciate everything that everybody has done for me. Here at Stitch, we celebrate the ways everyday people are making this country a kinder place to live, one incredible story at a time. Acts of kindness, big and small, can catch us by surprise. Here are stories of heartwarming gifts and the recipients who didn't see them coming. When a toddler began treatment for kidney cancer, two nonprofits joined forces to give him the playset of his dreams. We are out here building a playset for a little boy named Luca. He's almost two years old, his birthday's in a couple of weeks. So we kind of rolled this all into one big celebration for their family. Little Luca was diagnosed with kidney cancer when he was a year and a half old, after his doctor noticed a lump during a routine checkup. Back in December-ish, we went in for his 18-month checkup, and the pediatrician felt something hard in his belly, and we went and had an x-ray, and then from there we had to go to Brenner's. And December 1st, we were told that he had Wilms tumor, um, pediatric cancer. His mom, Jamie, said she's constantly inspired by her son's strength. He always has a smile on his face and loves to play and keep up with his big brother. And so it just gives me hope and courage to keep going for the day. It's like, if he can be good, I can be good. To keep Luca's spirits up, Rock Solid Foundation helped build him an impressive new swing set. Back up the hill a little bit. At Rock Solid, our mission is to build hope for kids fighting cancer. And we do that through the power of play. Building play sets for kids undergoing treatment is part of the nonprofit's mission. Our goal is to put a germ-free place where they can play and be a kid right in their backyard. Another nonprofit, Mickey Truck Bodies, teamed up with Rock Solid to build it. While the unveiling of the surprise swing set was emotional for the family, Luca was all smiles. He is so resilient. <laughs> Um, I just look at him and he can't even vocalize um, or complain or vocalize what he's going through. As for the big surprise, Jamie sees it as a total blessing. It just means a lot um, to just be able to have an organization um, come behind you and build something and bless your family with something so huge for Luca. We would never have been able to afford this playset, and we dreamt about having one. And for our dreams to come true, it just means the it just means the world. Next up, a veteran hit hard by the pandemic had no idea he was in for a sedantastic surprise. What an amazing day! For Gulf War veteran and Marine Scott Shepard, the COVID-19 pandemic had a devastating impact on his finances. He was laid off and lost the car he was driving. Everyone around here that, was, that has been involved in this, that has made this happen on this day, um, I couldn't be more grateful. To help him out, the nonprofit Second Chance Cars got to work with a local technical school. Their mission? To return a 2013 Nissan Altima to showroom condition. It was an honor to like work on it because, you know, it's like giving back to someone who served our country. What made the surprise even more poignant? The fact that the car was donated by the widow of another veteran. My husband was a, uh, a veteran and he served in the uh, US Navy in the submarine service. So I know that he's looking down and he is extremely pleased to know that this donation is going to help a veteran. To own the car outright, Scott was tasked with paying just $75 a month for one year, thanks to the program's 0% bank loan. The car also came with a AAA card and a tank full of gas. When you're learning to do work in the trades, to know that you have the power to be a philanthropist, to be somebody who has the power to give back to their community is not something that is obvious, and we hope that they can feel that power from today's event. In our next story, when a parent came down with COVID-19, a soccer team proved teamwork is just as important off the field as on. Praying for your family, Please let us know if there's anything we can do to help. When a crisis hits, it's easy for unimportant household chores to fall by the wayside. So after Michael came down with COVID-19, his son's soccer teammates banded together to take one thing off the family's plate, yard work. I'm trying to hold it together. I have three boys. 
that need their mom. Michael had spent two weeks in intensive care, and it was taking a toll on the family. Fortunately, they were surrounded by a community of people who showed up for them. It's hard to take when you're not used to it, but it's amazing. They received cards, prayers, and even mulch. That's right, Leanne first thought the person delivering the mulch had the wrong house, but he didn't. And soon her son, Aiden's soccer teammates, and their parents were pitching in with yard work. Uh, I thought it was the right thing to do, and everybody, needs a, every, everybody once in a while needs a pitch in to help. Our soccer team's a family. We've always been together multiple times, and it's for one cause, and it's for their dad, and we're just trying to help out. Leanne's son helped out too and said his dad, who usually does most of the yard work, would be full of gratitude. I think it's really nice that they they would take the time to come out here and just not even something specific, just come out and help us do yard work. Next, when a therapy dog was donated to a school, he became a beacon for a community dealing with a terrible loss. The adults love him just as much as the children. Shiner the therapy dog quickly became a beloved fixture at Mason Early Childhood Center. The school paired him up with students that had trouble saying goodbye to their parents in the morning, as well as with kids who had lost a loved one. He's spending a lot of time with our counselors, especially um, if a child is having a difficult time. He, when he steps in, he usually is helping the child to calm down. Robin, Shiner's caretaker, first had the idea for a therapy dog back in 2008. But dogs were first brought to the school after the sudden passing of Sable, a fourth grader, in 2019. And to know that that had such an impact on some of the kids, um, I hope that Shiner is able to play that part. After that, Shiner was gifted to the school by the Shine Like Sable Foundation, which was started by her parents in her honor. And it's not us giving this gift. That's the greatest thing about it. It's the community giving this gift because they're the ones that give to the Shine Like Sable Foundation um, to go and do things that are bigger than ourselves. The foundation's mission is to continue shining Sable's light for children in need, something Shiner is perfectly suited for. Shiner is a perfect example of Sable, as Sable always had a bright smiling face and a big smile on her face, and then she had this spunkiness about her. And it's been comforting for Sable's parents to see the difference Shiner has made. It's an emotional thing, for sure. When I first saw him with the kids, I, that just instantly made me cry because I just thought, this is what it's all about. This is somebody Sable would have helped, and now he's helping them. Next, a police sergeant got his independence back after a near-death experience, all thanks to his new wheelchair-accessible ride. Still have a long road, still recovering. I just appreciate everything that everybody has done for me. Sergeant Isaac Carrington is a 23-year police veteran. He was given a van designed for his wheelchair, which he has used since being shot while off-duty. Mike is a very brave and positive person. Not once have I heard him say any words of negativity toward his current situation. In 2019, Isaac was talking to a neighbor when they were approached by two men in masks demanding property. He was shot multiple times, leaving him on life support. But Isaac survived and was released from the hospital two weeks later. The Fraternal Order of Police, Mile One Auto Group, and the Signal 13 Foundation raised the funds to buy him the van. There are people who value the sacrifices Sergeant Carrington made, and that gives us hope, even in the times we live in right now. And Bedco Mobility upfitted the vehicle so it works entirely by hand controls. This van gives me an opportunity to become independent again, give me some, uh, some mobility, just to bring some normalcy back into my life, to put the pieces of my life back together. Finally, gift giving is an art form, but in the case of one elementary school, the art was also the gift. It's about igniting the imagination. 85 art packs were donated to first grade students at Quincy Elementary School. They came from Art Resource Collaborative for Kids, or ARC. Kids really right now, what they need is to feel safe, seen, and heard in order for them to learn. The ARC kits include a sketchbook, crayons, pencils, markers, and face masks. In a single school year, 600 kits were given out among four schools. For Cynthia, the principal at Quincy Elementary, the kits fall into her holistic approach to learning. 
These donations are amazing. We want to make sure that we're looking at uh, the whole child and not just their academics. So having enrichment opportunities like the arts and music is very important. We hope you enjoyed these stories of selfless acts of generosity. Thanks for watching Stitch.